Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to look at quick starting a project management task using Project Libra. Project Libra is open source project management software. Open source means that the source code is free, so you can use it free of charge. In project management terms, Project Libra has most of the features that are available in more expensive products such as Microsoft Project. We'll use Project Libra to track the process involved in manufacturing a new product in time for Halloween. I'm going to click New to open a new project, and I'll type a project name, New Halloween Project. I can add my name in as manager, and we'll set a start date. It's Friday today, but we're going to start this project next Monday, so we'll click Monday. I can add some notes if I like, and click OK. This is the basic Project Libra interface. You'll have a name column, that's where you put the tasks, the duration of the task, the time that they're due to start and finish, and then there's a column here for predecessors, and we'll have a look at that in a minute. For now, what we need to do is to list the major tasks involved in getting our project to completion. From experience, we know that we have to go through a research and development phase. We need to design our packaging, we need to produce the item, and then we need to ship it. Now these are the major tasks that we have to do, but of course within research and development there are a number of subtasks. We're going to add those now. We'll click in the row immediately below the research and development task, and I found the easiest way to add subtasks is to go to the resource panel here and click insert. I've got four items to add in here. I'm going to go ahead and add brainstorming ideas, determining the product, designing the product, and testing and fixing. These four items here all fall underneath the title of Research and Development, so we're going to indent them. I'm clicking on one, shift clicking on the last in the series, and I'll click indent. Now that does a couple of things, not only does it indent these items, but it also makes Research and Development bold. That's now a major heading. We can collapse these items and expand them, and there's a black bar here for Research and Development. Now similarly, for packaging, production, and delivery, there are some subtasks that we need to do. I'm going to go ahead and enter those now. Having entered these, I'm going to select the items that fall underneath each of these topics. Click on one cell, shift click on the next, and indent them. Now I'm back to my four main tasks, with each of them having a number of subtasks underneath them. And each of these can be collapsed and expanded using these little icons here, and each of them has a black bar. By default, Project Libra assigns a one-day duration to each of these tasks. Of course, some of these are going to take a lot longer than a day. Well, we're going to spend two days brainstorming ideas for our new product, so I'll type two in there and press Enter. You can see that the bar for brainstorming ideas is not only turned red, but it's also become two days in length. You see that it's going to take Monday and Tuesday of next week. For determining the product, it's going to take us one day to do that, so I'm just going to type 1 and press Enter. To design our product, once we've determined what it is that we're going to produce, it's going to take us six days. That's from experience. And testing and fixing it will take another three days. In terms of packaging, we know that it's going to take us a couple of days to design the packaging, but our manufacturer is going to take 10 days to produce our point of sale packaging. In terms of production, it'll take us three days to tool up the plant to be able to produce this new product. And then it's going to take us a couple of days to produce the initial product run. In terms of packaging, we can package everything for the initial run in one day, and then shipping's going to take us four days. So now our Gantt chart is starting to take shape. Each one of these items now has a bar that represents how long it's going to take. But of course, everything's not going to take place on Monday next week. You see, when we're brainstorming ideas, we can't be determining the product because we haven't brainstormed the ideas that will help us determine what product we're going to produce. So there's a dependency here. 
determining the product can't take place until we've brainstormed ideas. There are a couple of ways of setting up dependency in Project Libra. One of them is clicking in this predecessor's column and we're saying that we can't determine the product until brainstorming ideas is complete because brainstorming ideas is in row 2, then we just type a 2 in here and press enter and the dependency is created for us. Now this is what is called a finish to start dependency. Upon finishing brainstorming of the ideas, we can then start determining the product. And most of your dependencies will probably be of this type. This is another one. We can't design the product until we've determined what it is that we're going to be designing. Another way of creating this dependency is just by picking up this box for determining product and dropping it on top of the box for designing the product and that creates another finish to start dependency. And of course we can't start testing and fixing the product until we've designed it so we have something to test and fix. Same thing, another dependency. The fact that these items are now in red is telling us that they're on what is called the critical path. This is a sequence of tasks that add up to the longest overall duration for the project. In other words, once these are complete, the project will be complete but any change in the time that any of these tasks takes is going to have an effect on when our product is ready. Now we've still got a lot of dependencies still to build, so let's have a look at the rest. Now in terms of designing our point of sale packaging, we can start that as soon as we finish designing the product. Basically while we're still testing and fixing it because we know what it's going to look like so we know the kind of packaging that we need to design for it. So I'm just going to grab this and start moving it. And so it can start at the same time as this task can. But of course it's dependent on the design of the product being complete. So we're going to create a dependency here. And it's another finish to start dependency. These two items can start at the same time, but they're dependent on this task taking place first of all. Of course, we can't start manufacturing our packaging until we've designed it, so there's another dependency here. And this task is also on our critical path. It's a critical task. If its time expands beyond the 10 days that we've allowed for it, it's going to push out our delivery date. Now let's look at our production. Well, we can start tooling up as soon as we finish designing the product. So again, we've got a dependency here. Once we've finished designing the product, we can start working on tooling up. And that can take place alongside testing and fixing. Manufacturing the initial product, well, that can't take place until we've got our production plant tooled up. So there's a dependency here, another finish to start dependency. In terms of packaging, well, we can't start packaging the product until two things have happened. Firstly, we've got some product to package, and secondly, we've got the packaging to put it in. There are a couple of things that this item is dependent on. So I'm going to create both of those as dependencies. Drag and drop for one of them, and then drag and drop for the second one. And you can see it's starting time is being affected by the packaging right now, more so than producing the initial product. And of course we can't ship our product until we've packaged it. So right now what we can say is that if all these processes, all these tasks take place in the time that we've allowed for them and no longer, then we can say to our customers that they're going to have the product in their stores somewhere around the 17th of August. Once you've created your initial project, you can save it back on the file menu, click Save As. And you're going to save this as a Project Libra file, a POD file. I've called this new Halloween project and I'll click Save. In future, I can come and open that file again. I'm going to close this, but I just need to choose Open. I need to locate the folder in which I saved it and here is my new Halloween project. I'll click to open it. That's the basic process for creating a very simple Gantt chart and a critical path in Project Libra. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more video tutorials here on my YouTube channel. And consider subscribing to my channel where you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Microsoft Office applications and Project Libra.